When it comes to the biggest gaming fails of 2018, one of the things that has to be up there has to be the PlayStation Classic. It looked like such a surefire thing, a surefire hit, another classic system that was coming to the marketplace after the success of the NES and the Super Nintendo Classic, and then the PlayStation Classic just managed to fall flat on its face. So a lot of people were disappointed with the system, myself included. I was definitely very vocal about my disappointment of the system as well. But I've been thinking to myself, should Sony release a successor to this system? Should they release a PlayStation Classic 2? Yes, I do think they should release a PlayStation Classic 2. Thanks for watching this video. As always, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Later. That's literally what some people want YouTube videos to be. Not go into any depth or speculation or reasoning for it. Just give a solid answer and then be about your way. But here on RGT85, we don't do that. So today's video, I want to talk about the PlayStation Classic and why I feel like they should make a PlayStation Classic 2. So sit back, relax, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and let's jump into the world of PlayStation Classic and why they should make a sequel. Hey, RGT85, hey Sean. Oh my God, it's Stevie Richards. So in case you've been living under a rock or just completely ignored the PlayStation Classic, let me catch you up to speed with this console. This console released early in December, and the whole thing of it was another plug-and-play system to sort of rival the NES and the Super Nintendo. And it looked like it was going to be something pretty cool. When it was first unveiled, they showed five different games coming to the system, games like Tekken 3 and Final Fantasy 7, games that you definitely assimilate with the PlayStation 1, and then of course we got more information on it. We got a full games list, and things got a bit murky. There was 20 games available on the system, and definitely some of those games were a bit lacking. The system did come with two controllers, but they were not DualShock controllers. They were original PlayStation 1 controllers, and it was going to retail at $100. But as time went on, we got more and more information on this system, and things just looked really grim. And by the time I got one of these systems in my hand, it honestly was just such a huge disappointment to me. I paid $100 for it, I got it on launch day, and it just wasn't what I wanted. It wasn't really reminiscent of the PlayStation PlayStation 1 and the PlayStation brand in my opinion. It was very sloppy, it was very slow, games were running in PAL mode so it made these games run slower and it really just made no sense to me. So this system was quickly written off by many major gaming publications and YouTubers alike. Not a lot of people out there really like this system. Of course nowadays you can hack it and fix a lot of the problems that come with it, but the average consumer shouldn't have to do things like hack a system. They shouldn't have to go through the trouble of trying to add more games to it and fix the games that are already on here. It's it should just be plug and play ready out of the box. That's sort of the appeal of these systems. That's why things like the SNES and the NES Classic sell so well because they're plug and play consoles. They're simple, anyone can do it. If you wanna play some PlayStation 1, you should just be able to hook this up for your television and play some PlayStation 1. So because of that, there was a bit of a fallout with the PlayStation Classic and there was some sort of reasonings as to why this system was not successful. Some of them I agree with, some of them I necessarily don't agree with. One of the main reasons why people thought this system was unsuccessful was just because the PlayStation brand doesn't have that same sort of nostalgia attached to it like the NES or the Super Nintendo or even the rumored N64 classic. But honestly, I don't really believe that because when you look at sales statistics, the uh, PlayStation 1 actually outsold all three of those systems. If you combine the sales of the Super Nintendo and the NES combined, the PlayStation 1 outsold that. The PlayStation 1 outsold the N64. Sure, it didn't have maybe iconic mascots like Mario and Zelda on there, but you had people like Crash Bandicoot, you had people like Spyro and Solid Snake. And so I don't really buy into that whole notion that there's not nostalgia attached to the PlayStation 1 brand. I've seen so many pictures recently of these PlayStation 1 dress shirts that people are finding at places like TJ Maxx and Marshalls. And the PlayStation brand, I feel, still does have name value. Obviously, the PlayStation 4 is the most successful console of this generation. So there's going to be nostalgia tied into these systems. And I think that's one of the main focuses of this system was just the game library of it. Because you can't, you're can't, you not necessarily nostalgic towards hardware. You're nostalgic towards the games on that hardware. 
The PlayStation Classic came with 20 games built in on it. And honestly, some of these games had no reason to be on this system. And some of the games that were on here should have been replaced with other games. A game like Rainbow Six. I'm sorry, but I will die on this hill that nobody that owned a PlayStation 1 cared about Rainbow Six. If I'm picking 20 of the best PlayStation 1 games of all time, Rainbow Six doesn't even make the top 100. It doesn't even make the top 200. If you poll people and say, hey, what did you think of Rainbow Six on the PlayStation? People would be like, I I didn't play it like nobody cared about Rainbow Six and to put Rainbow Six on this system just showed how lackadaisical things were especially when you look at the PlayStation 1 library there were so many games released on the PlayStation 1 in comparison to the N64 or the Super Nintendo or the NES like it's just crazy to me that they put so many soft and crappy games on this system games like Siphon Filter yeah Siphon Filter 1 was sort of iconic but Siphon Filter 3 was a better game with Tekken you went straight to Tekken 3, you didn't bother with Tekken 1 and Tekken 2, so I don't understand why they would just jump from Tekken 1 to Tekken 3, obviously Tekken 3 being the better game, but with Siphon Filter, you do Siphon Filter 1 instead of Siphon Filter 3. Things like this just didn't make sense, and it really didn't add up to be a successful system. But the point of this video is to talk about whether or not Sony should make a successor to the system, a PlayStation Classic 2. And honestly, I feel like they should, and that probably comes as a bit of a shock to some people because of how hard I've been on the original PlayStation classic but a playstation classic 2 to me just makes sense from a myriad of standpoints the first standpoint is to re-insure goodwill with your consumer base look video game companies mess up like everyone messes up in life it's just a part of life look at nintendo they released the virtual boy like the virtual boy i love the virtual boy to death but it sucked like it's just a guilty pleasure of mine but of course they bounce back nintendo also released the wii u and like the wii u was a pretty cool system in my opinion but it didn't gravitate with the general consumer base and it was just an absolute Absolute failure but Nintendo looks at those mistakes and then fixes those mistakes and Sony has made mistakes along the way and they've done a good job of trying to fix those mistakes look at the launch of the PlayStation 3 the system was so overpriced and the architecture of it was pretty complex so that companies couldn't easily port over games to the system from systems like the Xbox 360 or transitioning their projects from the PS2 to the PS3 of course Sony over time really fixed all the problems with the PlayStation 3 and it became a great system by the end of its life cycle but the the initial thing was not that good and I feel like you owe it to consumers to sort of fix this situation with the PlayStation Classic because the PlayStation 1 like I said it's a great system the PlayStation 1 sold over a hundred million units so to say that there's no nostalgia tied to it to say that people don't care about the PlayStation 1 is just silly in my opinion so what would you do to make a PlayStation Classic 2 a better system I think I have some ideas first and foremost you could go about this a couple different ways I'm kind of back and forth on what I think they should do but the system itself, I think there should be different colorways. Of course, there was the all black system that was like a test system or an online system for the original PlayStation 1 that only released in Japan. But I feel like you could do different colorways with this system because like I said, I don't think people are necessarily attached to the hardware. They're attached to the games of the system. Or you could do a PlayStation 1, the PlayStation original PlayStation mini design for the PlayStation Classic 2 to sort of differentiate it from this system. Another thing I would do is DualShock controller, a single DualShock controller controller because that way you could still keep the price around $100 by implementing a DualShock controller. Now admittedly a lot of PlayStation 1 games did not have the DualShock capability or it was optional for the game but games like Ape Escape which were pretty iconic for the PlayStation 1 should be available on this system and I think consumers should have the option to be able to use DualShock controls which of course is a standard thing nowadays. I think by implementing one DualShock controller instead of two standard controllers would keep that price point around $100. Another thing that they need to do with it is obviously add some flair to the menu system the menu system on the original PlayStation Classic was just atrocious like it was a blue screen and you had little crappy box arts of games and you would flip through them there was no music there was no information about these games other than a brief little sentence that you got about what the game was and that was it and I think that that's part of the nostalgia aspect that people want people want to be able to get additional information on these games they want to know what these games are they want a little pizzazz they want a little bit of flair in the menu system system and put a song in there like how hard is it to put a song there that plays a little jingle while you're selecting your games everything was just so half-assed with the PlayStation Classic it obviously was a chance to get some holiday sales but you can't just do that you can't just jump in you have to still make a quality product 
But of course, the most important thing with the PlayStation Classic 2, if they decide to do one, is a solid game library. You've used up some big games on the original PlayStation Classic. Games like Metal Gear Solid, Resident Evil, and Final Fantasy VII. But really, that's just the tip of the iceberg of high quality games when it comes to the PlayStation brand. There's a million different RPGs out there. Why would you put something like Rainbow Six on here? There's no reason for Rainbow Six to be on this damn system. And there's no reason for it to be on any system unless it's a classic PC or a classic Dreamcast, because those were the good versions of that game but honestly you really just need to solidify it with a great game library games like silent hill crash bandicoot spyro these were the games that people remember with the playstation the tomb raider series sure some of these games haven't aged all that great but you can't say rainbow six aged all that great on the playstation one because it was never great on the playstation one it was just great on other platforms so i think a strong game library would be very important with the playstation classic 2 there's so many great games out there for the original playstation to choose from and there needs to be more bangers and less fillers on this. I understand you want to have a game variety and that's why games like Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo got put on this system, but at the end of the day, you need to have reminiscent games. That's why these systems sell. That's why people gravitate towards these systems. So while the PlayStation Classic was a big failure, while you could find it for anywhere from $40 to $60 at most major retailers nowadays, after being $100 at the launch of the system, I don't think Sony should necessarily abandon this completely. I really honestly feel like they should do a PlayStation Classic Classic 2 because they really owe it to consumers. There's still PlayStation nostalgia. You don't sell over 100 million systems and then say that there's no nostalgia or attachment to the PlayStation 1. There is. You just have to go about it in a better way. No PAL versions of the games. More flair and more pizzazz on the menu system and just a better overall system and a better overall library of games. And I honestly feel like a PlayStation Classic 2 would be very successful. I know I would pick one up if it was a good system and I think a lot of my viewers would too. So let me know in the comments section down below what you feel are you done with the classic systems are you over them or do you think that sony does owe it to its fans to make a playstation classic 2 a better system with a better library of games no pal versions and just better overall hardware and more pizzazz and flair in the menu system and as always thank you for checking out this video if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications check out other videos on the channel and as always i will catch you guys on the next video later